Oh, joining me now is Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, House Republican Conference Chair. Elise, great. You, uh, you were with him after the speech, right? Was he in a good mood? He was in a great mood, as he should be. He laid out a very policy-focused speech, laying out all of the crises that the American people are facing under Joe Biden's failed presidency. And I thought he was particularly effective at laying out this crime surge that we're seeing not only in my home state of New York, but really across this country. And of course, he laid out the importance of border security and how secure our border was under President Trump's very successful border security policies versus this wide open border we're seeing under Joe Biden. And so it was a well done speech. I was at the speech as well as met with him afterward. And I think he laid out a vision and really a counter to Joe Biden. Well, you know what? I think the whole America First Policy Institute summit, that's what we did yesterday. We laid out a complete alternative vision of America, for that matter, from Biden's. At least, hang on. I got some sound from the speech and then you can comment on it. Uh, the first one is, in fact, on the crime story. Take a listen, please. We have to give our police back their authority, resources, power, and prestige. To leave our police alone. Give them back the respect that they deserve. Our great police know what to do. We have to allow them to do it. We need to return to stop and frisk policies in cities and not shy away from it. Yeah, I think he's spot on. And Elise, as you well know, um, I mean, we might have a film clip of it. You can't see it. But you got this crazy story, I guess, yesterday. Uh, this kid is jumping a subway turnstile. The cop comes after him. He attacks the cop. All right. And he's been busted once before for a concealed weapon, I believe. And then they let him go, Elise, right? No bail, no jail. Lee Zeldin's assassin would-be murderer, let go, no bail, no jail. So in New York and around the country, I think Trump is on to something here, isn't he? He is onto something, and I have seen the video, Larry. Uh, people are seeing it not only all across New York, but across the country. And this is unfortunately what people are experiencing in their everyday communities. And President Trump laid all that out, telling the stories of the 35-year-old woman who was stalked back to her apartment and brutally mur murdered, talking about the landscaper who was shot and killed uh, after he blew a few blades of grass wrongly in a car going down the street. This was a small business owner mm. uh, who was murdered as well. We absolutely must support the police. House Republicans are going to focus in our commitment to America on safety and security, increasing our funding to law enforcement, making sure that we're not limiting their tools, that they're allowed to do their jobs every single day, and absolutely going on offense against these failed bail reform policies, where, as even the Democrat mayor of New York says, it's catch, release, and repeat. Mm. We're seeing that day in and day out in New York. Yeah, I think it's a national issue. I think Trump is great to highlight it. The Bidens never do. I got one more clip. Um, he's got one on uh, China and energy. Let me play that clip for you and get your response. Don't give up the tariffs on China. We want to bring back our jobs and secure manufacturing independence. We need to rapidly maximize domestic oil and gas production to restore energy independence and bring the price of gasoline back down to a number that nobody even believes anymore. We had it down to $1.87. $1.87, Elise Stefanik. That's a lovely number. We'd never see that during the Biden years. And you know, this China thing, I mean, why the heck should we uh, take the tariffs back? Why should we give it any concessions to China? I don't know if you followed it. We covered it earlier in this in this show. The breaking story, China is spying on our own Federal Reserve. They're infiltrating on our own central bank, for heaven's sake. They're the worst of the worst. They are evildoers. Why should we give China any concessions whatsoever? We should give China absolutely no concessions. We need to absolutely strengthen our supply chain and reduce our reliance on China. And I did listen to the segment earlier, Larry, where you talked about China seeking to gain influence not only at the Fed, but we see it that at the highest levels of U.S. government and at the state and local government level. I'm on the House Armed Services Committee, the House Intelligence Committee, and we must have a robust plan to be tough on China, to not give them any concessions, to use our uh, leadership when it 
it comes to trade, when it comes to tariffs, but also make sure in the national security space that we are the leader on all these emerging technologies, quantum, artificial intelligence, because China has laid out their plan very publicly. They want to be the world leader, and they're trying to infiltrate government to do so. Uh, so we need to use absolutely any opportunity to make sure that we're being tough on China. And I will tell you, I've seen the polling, Larry, when it comes to reducing our dependence upon China for manufacturing. That's a polling issue, not just for Republicans, but independents and Democrats. That is a winner. House Republicans are going to run and I believe earn a historic majority on strengthening our strengthening our economy. That means not only reining in inflation by stopping the spending, unleashing American energy independence, but it also means fixing the supply chain and making sure that we're working, making things in America uh, and that we have strong trade policy with our allies, not with our adversaries like China. Do me one favor, Elise, just one small favor. Make the Trump tax cuts permanent. That's all I ask. I'm a simple minded guy. Just make the Trump tax cuts permanent. Would you do that for me? Elise we're committed. Stefanik? Would you please do that We're committed to me? doing that, Larry. <laughs> yes, we're committed to doing that. That's going to be a big part of the House Republicans right. agenda. Uh, and I believe it's a big unifier issue among elected House Republicans, but more importantly, for the American people yeah, who are work. facing tough economic times. Wages went crimes. up. Everything went up. Gasoline prices went down. It was a good story. We never should have changed it. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, rising star. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. All right, coming Thanks, up Larry. on.